Well, as we all know, when the pandemic broke out in March, virtually every university in America converted to 100% online instruction. Very shortly thereafter, they all closed their residence halls as well and sent their students home. So that begged the question, what is the fall going to look like? And in early summer, it looked like the majority of universities were gonna be back open for in-person instruction. In fact, two thirds of American universities in June declared they were going to be either completely in person or substantially in person. Then an outbreak of the virus in July caused a pivoting of most universities where when they did finally open, about 55% ended up being either hybrid, partly in person, partly online, or substantially online. An interesting outcome, however, was that didn't change what the students did. The students still went back to college this fall. Now the on-campus housing situation this fall was changed dramatically from the prior year. The word that's being used is de-densification. Say that again, de-densification. Reducing the density of students living on campus. Most universities reduced their on-campus capacity by somewhere between 20 and 50%. Picture a dormitory with gang bathrooms at the end of the hall. Those are being shut down. Picture double and triple occupancy bedrooms. Those are being single occupied this year. What that did was reduce the on-campus occupancy, but it also pushed students off campus to purpose-built student housing properties. So yes, the off-campus market actually improved because of the de-densification of the housing on campus. We have two properties uh, by way of example, one at Michigan State that landed 170 leases in the weekend after Michigan State pivoted to close all their residence halls. Similarly at San Diego State, where they reduced their on-campus capacity from 7,500 beds last year to 2,600 this year, they closed six residence halls. We signed 100 leases in the first week after that announcement was made by the university in June. So by and large, the markets are either the same as they were last year, because the universities are still housing a similar amount on campus, or those that de-densified sent demand off campus. So the performance of student housing this fall proved once again that student housing, off-campus student housing, is recession resistant, and in this case, perhaps virus resistant. So take some of these into, into account. Normally, we have a no-show factor. We sign leases all year long, and they're all expected to show up and move in in August. Usually, that number on any given year would be about a percent. This year, in the COVID-19 environment, it was less than 1%. And in fact, some delayed housing decisions caused leases to be signed in September this year, which earned back 75 of the 100 no-shows that we had. That's out of 19,000 beds. That's not very much. So the students showed up this fall. They wanted to be at school. Our collections this fall have been 99%. So the students, backed by parental guarantees, are also paying their rent, and enrollments were fairly strong as well at America's top universities. In 2021 first, I'm expecting that small percentage of students who did choose to stay home this fall, call it less than 5% of enrollments that had 100% courses online and chose to stay home this fall, I think some of those are actually gonna come back this spring. They're feeling optimistic because of the development of a vaccine. I also believe that politics played a huge role in the decision of states and governments to either try to be open or to be closed. Now that an election is behind us, I think those politics will be behind us as it relates to the politics of the virus. And I think that means elected officials are going to be looking to open the economy, open businesses, open schools, and try to get back to some semblance 
of normalcy. And finally, if the election results for the presidency stand as they are currently reported, I think we will see a return to strong growth of international student enrollments starting in the fall. That's what the outlook is for student housing and higher education in 2021.